One of the most dangerous teachings from law of attraction cultures, or lack thereof, is that they constantly grill into your head how the law of attraction works. 90% of coaches fail to make you understand that there are actually 12 laws in the way the universe works. If you don't know it, you're manifesting as good as just plain luck. Learn about these 12 laws of the universe so you know the real way the universe works. Namaste, Sacred Masters. I'm Dr. Iwan Sukehi, Certified Shadow Work and RP Manifestation Coach. And today, we are going to talk about the 12 laws of the universe. Now, many of you are already familiar with the Law of Attraction, popularized by Rhonda Burns in a best-selling book and documentary, The Secret. The basis of The Secret is that positive energy attracts positive things in your life. And by merely thinking, you can manifest anything you want and desire. While there are many believers who treat this theory as Bible, citing roots to Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, Norman Vincent Peale's The Power of Positive Thinking, or Tony Robbins' Unleash the Giant Within. The undercurrent of each book is to mind your thoughts, stay positive, ignore self-doubt and criticism. Since self-doubt, criticism, and negativity are parts of us and cannot be ignored, hence how the shadow side and shadow child is created, Utilizing this one law can prove to be dangerous, not only because it is confirmation bias, but in that it picks and chooses what people want to hear without giving them the whole truth. In short, it can sound similar to me telling you how to be rich by sitting down, but not telling you that you have to be working while sitting down. As I stated before, the reason why law of attraction gurus won't give you the whole story is because there is an industry that needs to be filled when you finally crash and burn, and your shadow side explodes out in all its fury and anger. And when your life seems to be in the dark and bleak hole, these gurus have a course, seminar, or retreat waiting with some costing upwards of $10,000. Ironically, the self-help industry that it creates already fills the 11th law, which is the law of rhythm because it tries to keep you within a cycle of economy instead of universal energies. This toxic positivity expresses itself in damaging ways in that victims of terrible events in life are blamed for manifesting negativity while any positive invest in life is due to the wondrous and insightful teachings of the Guru which already fills the first law, the law of divine oneness. Therefore, in order not to be stuck in this endless cycle of economics and capitalism parading as spiritualism, understanding the 12 laws of the universe is necessary as part of our shadow work. Having the foundations of these 12 laws means you not only become successful in shadow work, but you understand how to apply it in harmony with the energies of the universe. Without shadow work and understanding the 12 laws of the universe, we fall into the harmful effects of toxic positivity whereby our need to control and avoid uncertainty triggers a failure to effectively process emotions that leads to physical damage to our body such as disrupted sleep, substance abuse, prolonged grief, and even PTSD. Because we are not matter, but rather energy, vibrations, and frequencies. What you don't heal still manifests itself into our physical world whether you realize it or not. The law of the universe do not change, unlike the laws of man. These laws were not created by humans, rather they have been observed and recorded as inherent in composition, structure, and function in the universe. Thus, with the knowledge of these laws and applying them to your shadow work and manifesting, you need not worry about changes or updates. The only change is you, as you grow, mature and bloom within these laws and the harmony of nature, relationships with others, and yourself. Remember, the laws of the universe, as the name states, doesn't apply only to Earth. It applies to the entire universe. As physics is a pattern that nature obeys, our energies, vibrations, and frequencies is a pattern that functions within these laws of the universe. The light coming from a child's flashlight moves in exactly the same speed 180,000 miles per second as the furthest star in the galaxy. The proton electron mass Russian is the same in a galaxy 6 billion light years away as it is here on Earth. 
Thus, while physicists have acknowledged that the universe is governed by dependable, immutable, absolute, universal mathematical laws, there is no origin. That is because time is a construct created by man to create a sense of balance by making it linear. So, if the universe is orderly and you are part of the universe, we should begin to apply these laws into our shadow work. Let's get right into it. The Law of Divine Oneness When we understand this law, the rest of the laws of the universe will make sense to us. In the simplest term, it states that we are all connected, which means everything that we can see or not see is connected. Every thought, every action and event is in some way connected to each other. For those who are religious, this may be a hard pill to swallow as we are accustomed to separating ourselves from a divine entity. But remember that the foundations of religion, held together by their own economy, tidings and donations, like men, are fundamentally flawed. If you are Christian, the idea of divine oneness is already in the Bible. In John 17, 21, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us. Since we are talking about law of the universe, I will refrain from my thoughts on religious institutions created by men. Because we are all one, connected to source. Within us is divine consciousness. We affect each other's vibrational frequency, which is where the term hive mind and collective consciousness comes from. This is why group meditating is beneficial. This is why you feel good when you help others out. And when you hurt someone, you feel guilt. I am you and you are me. When I describe the positive effects of shadow work in that you become the true and authentic you as well as improve relationships, I am tapping into the first law of divine oneness. When people see the real and authentic you, they feel more connected to you for this very reason. Because we are all one. Thus, by reclaiming your true self in shadow work, the world around you begins to connect with that true self. The Law of Vibration we are all energy, frequencies, and vibration. We already know this, even for those who are not spiritual. At many points in our life, we can feel the vibe of someone or someplace. Vibrations are sensory, and we send these vibrations out everywhere we go. At a microscopic level, we can see that everything from atoms to subatomic particles are in reality vibrating, just at different frequencies. Because the law of vibration decreased that Everything moves and nothing rests. It is our natural state to be in motion. Light, heat, magnetism, electricity and sound are just different forms of vibratory motion as are trees, chairs, animals and even computers. When our vibrations are aligned, we gravitate and feel joy towards something. A depressed person might enjoy the melancholy vibratory sounds of bands like The Cure or Nine Inch Nails while a hippie might enjoy the psychedelic vibratory sounds of the Grateful Dead. Notice that as you grew up and your vibrations change, so do your taste in other vibrations such as music, movies and art. When we reclaim back our authentic self to shadow work, we become aligned with the vibrations that give us joy, happiness and fulfillment. We learn in shadow work that high vibrations such as love, happiness and joy are no different than the low vibrations such as fear, anger and sadness. They are just vibrating at different speeds. It is just a stigma of using words like high and low makes us think there is a good and bad. This is because we live in a three-dimensional world, plane of dichotomies, accustomed to thinking of things in good, bad, black, white or yes, no. But with the universe, it is merely different vibrations, such as we don't say one music is better than the other, but that we have different tastes. Now that you understand what the law of vibration is, you can be more in tune with your environment around you and what you vibrationally gravitate towards. It is important because we can use these projections to reveal more about ourselves through shadow work. Law of Correspondence This law states that the universe reflects back onto us what our inner world is, which means that our reality is just a mirror reflecting back who we are on the inside. Fundamentally, because shadow work is about self-reflection, awareness, and taking responsibility for our authentic selves, knowing this law allows us to get a manual on what we need to work on. 
it is almost like the universe is showing us through our reality what we need to work on. This is how the universe communicates with us different parts of ourselves. In the Kabbalion, a study of Hermetic philosophy of ancient Egypt and Greece, the law of correspondence can be summed up into four words, as above, so below. As this relates back to the first law of the universe of divine oneness, in that what lies in the visible stars is linked to life on earth, that microcosm and macrocosm are connected. The law of correspondence expounds on it by saying that our inner world and outer world are the same. Thus, physical reality and spiritual reality are one and the same. Every event we experience in our outer world reflects on our spiritual self that is trying to be realized. Through this awareness, you will understand specifically where you would need to focus on for your shadow work journey. As your outer world will mold and shape based upon your inner world, you will begin to experience new things and new people that will prompt you on other aspects to do shadow work. Through the law of correspondence, we know that issues will always present themselves in our reality until we find a way to heal it. We will constantly be poor until we change our inner thoughts, emotions, and beliefs about money. When we do that, the law of correspondence will work and change our reality to suit it based upon our healing through shadow work. What is important to note about all laws is that one must not fight against it. As these laws are unchanging, it is only man's ego that thinks he could change the laws of the universe as he does with his government and politics. Living in harmony with these laws is the secret to living a life with peace, serenity, and fulfillment. Law of Attraction as I've previously touched upon this, the Law of Attraction states that you attract what you focus on. Like attracts like, positive energy attracts more positive energy, and vice versa. But this simple law has been practiced, unfortunately, in all its condensed and simplistic form, as I said before, when economy decides to distort this law into one that creates a false spiritual awakening. Because the Law of Divine One states that we are all connected, it is through the ego of man that we think our mind is separate from the first law. In essence, our mind, which we use to manifest and think positive things, is also connected to our hearts and our shadow side. For the law of attraction to work, in order to manifest the life and dreams that you desire within, we must change not only our thoughts, but our emotions and beliefs. All emotions and beliefs reside within our subconscious. Thus, without shadow work, our inability to become aware of our shadow side will cause more of it to manifest than what our conscious mind desires. Since the subconscious governs 95% of our mind, ignoring it proves disastrous for one's authentic life and beneficial for the pockets of fake gurus. You can watch my videos about emotions and beliefs which I will post on the links above and the description below. Without living your authentic self, we manifest instead what we think the world, society or culture wants. If I were to follow the standard measurement of success, I would manifest a nice car for myself. But my authentic self never liked cars, and instead, I focused my manifesting on stability in money and loving relationships with those around me. In that sense, I spend more time doing the things I love rather than boundless amounts of money servicing and repairing an expensive import car. Through shadow work, you will begin to manifest things that serve the true and authentic you. You will not be stuck with material possessions that make countless of millionaires and billionaires miserable, despite all the success they attain. Law of Inspired Action In the documentary The Secret, one of the ways they teach you how to manifest is by sitting down and visualizing what you want. What they barely touched on is the Law of Inspired Action, which is about taking real, actionable steps to invite what you want into your life. If you want money, Find a problem and create a solution in the value of goods or service. If you want love, practice self-love and compassion to others. Without the law of inspired actions, those who want to manifest money through the law of attraction find themselves sitting on your chair, refreshing your bank account, hoping something changes. Without the law of inspired action, people demand they be loved and force others to do things against their free will. The law of inspired action exists so that fulfillment and happiness is reserved for those who work with the universe rather than those who demand through their ego-driven privileged lives. Because action is about motion, law of perpetual transmutation of energy, it is the natural flow of the universe.
to attract and be in alignment with one's manifestation is just the beginning, such as starting a car. But one must drive in order for the car to function properly and take you from one place to another. The idea of shadow work is to reclaim your authentic and true self away from social norms and cultural conditioning. Thus, shadow work turns your regular action into inspired action. The difference is that regular action is about following the status quo, thinking what you're doing is right based upon what you've been conditioned to believe, clock in and out of a job, work endless hours, pay taxes, save what little money you have left, pay the bills. Now, while there may be necessities in life at your current moment, shadow work is all about being inspired first and taking action in place of that alignment. This can be misinterpreted that you quit your day job to pursue your passions, to become a musician. But what it is is that with shadow work, you can find jobs that have meaning instead, that flows in harmony with your alignment. When the long hours pass, usually in an instant, you feel energized instead of drained. The law of inspired action is about momentum, and when you harness it, exponential benefits, whether monetary or spiritually, flows into your life. Because the law dictates this is how the universe works. Law of Perpetual Transmutation of Energy Have you been around people who seem to suck your energy? A term some refer to these people are energy vampires. This is because the law of perpetual transmutation of energy states that energy can be transmuted but not changed. The good news is that it works both ways as well. We can actively lift negative energies around us with thoughts and actions. When we understand that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, we understand why shadow work is important. What we repress will stay with us until we do the work, heal it, and convert the energy. The law of perpetual transmutation of energy also demands that this energy be constantly in motion which also means your shadow side will constantly try to find ways to manifest itself. In order to work with this law, we must discover ways in which we can take negative energies and redirect it back as positive energies, whether onto others, but importantly for ourselves as well. Thus, shadow work can be seen as an alchemic form of working with this law rather than resist it. When we realize energy is never destroyed, we instead choose to work with it. Instead of merely working with thoughts, we have to use these thoughts to change emotions, which leads to changes in our belief. Understanding this law is key too, because it helps us realize that oftentimes, when we display negative traits, our shadows are coming out, and project it onto others, the energy doesn't just leave us, but rather has repercussions. This is stated in the next law, Law of Cause and Effect. Since energy is constantly in motion, they also create and progress through chain of events. Thus, every cause has an effect and every effect becomes the cause of something else. If your thoughts, emotions, behaviors, and actions create specific effects that manifest into your life, changing the root causes will create new effects in your life. When we do shadow work, we change our roots within, which manifest themselves into causes which then returns to us as effects. For most people, because they are unconsciously aware of their shadow side, they believe they are merely victims of accidents, chance, or bad luck, which we know is not the case. The decisions we make and the actions we take, both consciously and unconsciously, set into motions predictable and specific effects only if we become aware of our inner selves. Shadow work is about becoming aware of the 95% of things happening within our subconscious rather than the 5% of our conscious that most function on. It is not that we just think, act, or react with purpose. Other times, the law of cause and effect is set in motion with subconscious patterns which can manifest itself in ways such as habits, beliefs, values, meta-programs, and psychological rules. To be aware of how they manifest and affect our life, we have to be conscious of this law. It is interesting to note that our subconscious behavior under this law can manifest itself in dangerous ways such as the chaos theory of the butterfly effect. It means the sensitive dependence on initial conditions can multiply itself into larger difference in a later state. 
This means that small actions, sometimes we are even unaware of, can serve as a catalyst that set in motion chain of events that are much larger and sometimes more disastrous. The name the butterfly effect came from the theory that a butterfly flapping its wings that sets off a chain of events that eventually leads to a typhoon. Thus, it is important through shadow work to start developing the self-awareness and healing process so that we work in harmony with the law of cause and effect rather than set off chain of events that could turn our lives into a downward spiral on uncontrollable effect due to unforeseen causes. Law of Compensation you reap what you sow. We may have heard this phrase many times. This law of compensation works closely with the law of attraction in that you must always contribute in some way to what you desire. As stated before, merely using the law of attraction can be dangerous without full understanding of the other laws. The law of compensation takes the law of attraction and turns visualization into actionable steps rather than just fantasies. Based upon this law, if you plant seeds of positivity and authenticity, the universe states you will be compensated. On the other spectrum, if you plant seeds of negativity, they will sprout out in similar currency back into your life. The universe does not distinguish between what is positive and negative. Only humans do that. Thus, to reclaim back our authentic and true self through shadow work, we are able to plant the proper seeds that will only contribute to our growth in the right way that benefits us. Like the law of cause and effect, our actions, whatever they may be, will always get an equal and opposite reaction. What we do in life is how we will get compensated. Similarly, what you give will determine what you get in return. If you give love, you will get more love in return. If you help others, then you may be compensated in financial rewards or fulfilling relationships, depending on what seed you plant. Law of Relativity as I stated in the first law, the universe does not discern what is positive and negative. This is due to the law of relativity in that everything is neutral. What we decide is good or bad is based upon how we relate to things, based upon our experiences and how we compare them to the external world. For example, you may wish to live in a nice big mansion over your one bedroom apartment. But that's because you're comparing your living arrangements to that of someone else you deem to be wealthy. But for a homeless person, you are blessed with such an independent, wealthy, privileged and abundant life. It's all relative. The universe doesn't judge what is good, bad, big or small until it is experienced and compared by us. Thus, you can also understand that nothing is too big to achieve as your goals in life, based upon the law of relativity, for wealth, love and abundance are the exact same as your goals for manifesting the next cup of coffee. When you understand this law, you strip away the need to compare yourself to others and are able to serve yourself more authentically. Law of Polarity This law states that everything in life has an opposite. While I am hesitant to say that every good has an evil, love with fear, warm and cold, to understand this law means to accept the previous law that everything is relative as well. Instead of seeing something as good and evil, understanding the law of relativity also means to us, cats are beautiful pets, but to a mouse, it's a dangerous killing machine. Hence, when understanding the law of polarity, we must be conscious of the law of relativity as well. The law of polarity helps understand the process of our shadow work in that everything exists with duality. They are two inseparable parts of the same thing. Just like you could touch water and decide whether it's hot or cold, it is not the opposites we are experiencing, but the same continuum, water. In life, we forget that we are touching water. Instead, we just see it as hot water or cold water. And just like water, your shadow side is part of you in this continuum. We are able to see our shadow side, but we are also able to see the light side and how we can transmute this energy by shifting our energies. Through shadow work, we recognize the law of polarity and harness it to work for our growth rather than to repress it and avoid it. Mastery of this law with shadow work is understanding how to switch between polarities through the acceptance of it. We accept negative situations in terms of what we can learn from it, how to accept that based on the law of relativity, it may not be as bad as it seems. 
On the other end of the spectrum, switching to the polarity of positive situations can teach us what we want more out of life as well as practice of gratitude. Law of Rhythm One has to look into nature to see this law at work. From the tides that flow in and ebb out to the cyclic seasons of the year, energy works in the same way as well and is a vital part of the larger cycle. We experience business prosperity and then watch it go into hard times. We wonder why the universe would pull back on abundant energies when you have used the law of attraction to manifest and the law of compensation to work hard for it. But since we understand the law of polarity and the law of relativity, we are able to use these times to our advantage as well. The law of rhythm helps us remove ourselves from judging what is good or bad and attachment to outcome, but rather work in harmony with the universe to see what lessons could be learned because the energies cycle back upon us to prosperity again. When farmers see their crops bloom in fall and they see the fruits of their success during winter, the law of rhythm states they will still have to plant more seeds in spring and nurture those seeds in summer. Those unaware of this law expect to have prosperity all year round rather than see cycles as an opportunity to plant more seeds. We understand from the law of rhythm that sometimes when we want dreams, desires and miracles to happen, the universe delivers through this law sometimes in the flow of abundance and sometimes on the ebb tide. Law of Gender The law of gender states that all things have masculine and feminine energy in it. Living your life authentically means that you have to achieve your own balance in it. Similarly to humans and plants, when we plant seeds, masculine energy, it requires time to grow and manifest, feminine energy. In Taoist metaphysics, this concept of dualism can be seen in the yin and the yang. Thus, we each have the divine masculine as well as the divine feminine inside, whether you are male or female. When we use our right brain, we are using feminine energy. And when we use our left brain, we are using masculine energy. Thus, creative problem-solving feminine, which requires the execution of actionable steps, masculine, embodies the law of gender, which is where the most successful people in the world have harnessed and are able to go back and forth between these energies. Shadow work is about identifying the imbalance of our energies and using the countering energies to balance it. By stripping the ego of its supremacy in our psyche, we are able to connect with both energies which are required in order to be in harmony with the universe source energy. Because we know in the law of rhythm that circumstances change. We utilize the law of gender to realign ourselves. The more of these laws that you use in harmony with each other, the more you can achieve your goals, dreams and desires. If you only work with one law, like the law of attraction, it is similar to cooking with only one ingredient. For a full meal, you need salt, pepper, proteins, carbs, you name it. While you don't have to integrate every single law right now, start by understanding and paying attention to one law and see how it works everywhere in your life. What is one law that you learned today has been working invisibly without you knowing? Comment below and tell me what it is. In one of my videos on paying the universe, I talk about using some of these laws and how they work in harmony. If you want to see it in action, click on this link right now. I hope this knowledge has been helpful and beneficial for you. I'll see you in the next video. Namaste.